Hello everyone. This is Adish. I am a grade 10 student from Mumbai. So today's problem is easy pronunciation. The difficulty level of this problem is simple because you essentially don't need to know anything very specific. You only need to know the basics of strings in order to understand a solution. So in this problem we are basically given a string S consisting of N lowercase Latin letters which are basically the alphabets from A to Z which are in lowercase. For this problem we are given the sequence of vowels as A E I O U and we need to figure out whether it's easy to pronounce the given string based on the rule that the string will be hard to pronounce if it contains four or more consonants in a row. So for example apple and polish are easy to pronounce but this word is hard to pronounce and that's why I didn't pronounce it as well. So in this problem we are basically uh, going to take the input from the standard input. The first line will contain the number of test cases. Each of the test cases will contain two lines n, the length of the string and the second line will contain the string itself s and we need to print whether or not the string contains four or more consonants in a row. So an easy way to do this would be to basically keep a count of the number of consonants in a row so far while we are iterating through the string and let's understand exactly how we can maintain this value while iterating through the string. So in the first example we see that initially there's, there are no consonants. When you encounter the letter A again there are no consonants. So the count when you come to the first character is zero. When you come to the first character like the zeroth character the count is zero. When you come to the first character the count becomes one because you get a single occurrence of the, the consonant. Then when you come to the second character the count becomes two and when you come to the third character which is L the count becomes three. However once you reach the character E which is a vowel the count becomes zero again because this basically stores the count. So count is number of consecutive occurrences of a character of consonants basically and we will maintain this uh, variable count by constantly uh, storing the uh, values of the number of consecutive occurrences of consonants in in a array or we can just maintain a single variable and we can keep updating the value of count. So the way in which we'll update the value of count is if the current value of the string. So let's say we are iterating to the string and we are basically doing for each i in range 0 to n. If the current value i, if the current character in the string s of i, if that is equal to a vowel, so if that belongs to vowels, then we know that we will set count to be equal to zero because the number of consecutive occurrences of consonants has become zero. So all the previous consonants are ignored because we are con considering only currently how many consecutive consonants are there. So that's zero when you encounter a vowel. And once you encounter a consonant, that count value will actually in just increase by one because we know that whatever the previous value of count was, we are just getting one more consecutive occurrence of a consonant. So we can see this with the help of the first example. And if you want to consider another example, let's look at the second example. So initially count is zero, then it becomes one once you go to the zeroth character. It becomes 2, 3, 4 and 5 and 6 actually, 6, 7. So it becomes 7 all the way up till here. And uh, we know that since clearly 7 is greater than 4, we, greater than or equal to 4, we will print hard immediately. Like the moment we reach 4, we can break and print hard. I mean, we can print yes. Uh, uh, that uh, We can print no because we want to print no if it's hard to pronounce. So the moment we get these four consecutive, we can break and print no. 
or you can also see that this is 5, 6 and 7. So even if we don't break, you will get that the value of count is 7 at the 6th position. And at the 7th position, the value of count again becomes 0 because the 7th position is a vowel. So that's why up till the 6th position, the value of the count becomes increases from uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 all the way up till the 6th position it will become 7 because we are using zero based indexing and so when you start from 0 the count is 1 then when you go to index 1 the count becomes 2 at index 2 the count becomes 3 at index 3 the count becomes 4 at index 4 the count becomes 5 at index 5 the count becomes 6 and, in, and at index 6 the count becomes 7 at index 8 however the count becomes 0 again because we basically know that uh, or at index 7, the count becomes 0 because we know that we encounter a vowel. And the next index, the count becomes 1 again because we encounter a consonant. So we will just increase the answer by 1, like the current value of count by 1. And at the next index, it becomes 0, then 1, then 2, 3, then 0, and then uh, 0 again. So basically, uh, we will just repeat this process of storing the variable count. And at any point, if count is greater than or equal to 4, we will print yes and break. So this is the entire Python code. Like this is the main part of the Python code. And you can repeat this for t number of test cases. So you can just have a bigger loop for int t, for int i, in, for int j in range 0, comma t. Uh, repeat this entire thing and uh, obviously you need to take in the value of n and you will need to store the variable you will need to consider what vowels is and use the appropriate method so this is the basic pseudo code for this for, for the uh, entire uh, solution and now we can apply the pseudo code for the last three examples as well so in the third last example or the third example we will consider the word polish. So polish initially will have zero uh, as the value of count. Then once you get to the character P, the value of count becomes one. Then once you get to the vowel, the value of count becomes zero again, then one, then zero, then one, and then two. So at the end, the value of the count is two. So when we check in our method over here, we will check whether two is greater than or equal to four. That's wrong. So we'll print no uh, afterwards. So after we exit the loop, we'll print no, and we'll go to the next test case. Note that it is not necessary for us to check in the end. The value of count can be updated anywhere. So we'll need to check for e after each updation. So check after each updation in the loop. So that, so that you ensure that uh, whenever count gets updated, you're checking immediately whether or not count is greater than or equal to 4. The moment it becomes greater than or equal to 4, we know that the word will be hard to pronounce because there are four consecutive characters. And we will print yes and we'll break. I mean, we'll print no. Sorry, there should be no. And we'll break. Otherwise, we'll print yes. It's no because it's hard to pronounce. So sorry about that small mistake. And now in the last second last example, the word trist is actually um, easy to pronounce but for the sake of this problem we will say that it's hard to pronounce because there are one two three and four consecutive uh, consecutive consonants and if you consider the last consonant as well uh, it's going to be five consecutive consonants so we will print no so the moment we hit four we will break of the loop so i is equal to three and count is equal to four and we'll break the loop and print no so this is the uh, second last test case. And in the last test case, we'll print yes. It's possible to pronounce it because it contains only three consecutive consonants. So we will print uh, yes, it's easy to pronounce. And now I'll show you the code which implements the same idea of maintaining the variable count and updating it in each iteration. And uh, the value of count is updated based on the fact that is if SFI is a vowel, we will reset count. Otherwise, we'll increase count by one because 
s of i is a consonant and because s of i is a consonant we know that uh, basically there is one more consonant that uh, appears in the consecutive uh, list of characters so that's the idea now i'll show you the c++ code so for each test case i take in the value of n the length of the string so this is mod s and s is the string itself count is the number of consecutive occurrences of a consonant so if the number of consecutive occurrences of a consonant becomes greater than or equal to 4 in this case we will just set the answer to be false and we'll break uh, otherwise we will uh, continue and check in the future whether there is there is any occurrences of consonants which uh, are four or more so the moment we hit four or more occurrences we'll break and we'll print no and if there are no such uh, number of occurrences we'll print yes because it's possible to pronounce it easily and this is basically the list of vowels so if s of i is not in the list of vowels so if s of i is not in the list of vowels this means that it's a consonant and this means that count of consecutive occurrences of a consonant uh, will increase and that's basically the variable count and uh, otherwise we will set count to be equal to zero because a vowel appears here and that's what count is zero signifies that a vowel is appearing and there are no consecutive occurrences of a consonant over here so this code gets accepted because it does exactly what the problem asks us to do and it basically implements that efficiently another way to do this would be to do a kind of brute force where you check whether for each index i the next four characters are are basically consonants uh, so you can do that as well but this is a cleverer method and this method will basically work for any value of the of the number of consecutive occurrences so if you add a general value of k where k is the number of consecutive occurrences and if you set k to be something like 100 or something like um, even n o of n then th this method will work because this is an o of n method it does not depend on the value of k which is the number of consecutive occurrences in this case k is 4 so you can do a brute force but in general if you made a harder problem uh, this could be a smaller subtask and uh, that's actually what they should have done but anyways uh, uh, I hope you like this problem and my solution. If you have any doubts in any part of the solution, uh, do leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thank you.